I love what's going on here is there's no compromise in quality. And so if that's something that you're into is like extreme quality and you're really not worried about investing in the quality, high quality, this this is one, it's not like, when you look at boats and everything like this, is a 1.4 million dollar boat. So in the grand scheme of things, when you get onto this boat and you spend a couple hours, it's a fraction, an absolute fraction of the maintenance. Because Dave's kind of enlightened me on, on maintenance. Typically, you're at like 10% or something of the of the boat on an annual cost. Yeah, that's like right. it's a 1.4 million dollar boat, you're probably paying 140,000 to maintain the boat yep. on an annual basis. So. Ready? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, guys, we're recording another episode of Adversity Kings, kind of like an informal podcast today. We're going to do vlog style. So co-host, guest here, co-host Dave Wang. And then we have our guests. So we have Kyle. And Kyle, how do you say your last name? Stenzel. Kyle Stenzel. Kyle Stenzel. You got it. Mitchell Blyde. Bleed. Bleed. But yeah. Let's go. It's spelled like Blyde, okay. so I get that a lot. Yes. All right. Awesome. How are you guys doing today? Good, awesome. man. Thanks for coming. Dude, thank you guys. Yeah. The boat's phenomenal. I'm already in love with this boat. It's a Pardo 43. You got it. Absolutely. You already know what it is. Now you just need one. Dude, now <laughs> everybody needs one. So they're easily grabbable. Just hit Kyle up. You guys can grab these for the low. So hit them up for a Pardo 43. <laughs> so let's just jump right in, man. So what got you into boating? Both of you. Let's so, you. you know, I grew up in a super small town in middle of Illinois, right? There's not even a McDonald's or a stop like in our town. Okay. Um, so I was never a boater. And when I got out of college, I had a, a guy approach me on a boating company and he said, hey, come to a boat show. I was in the golf business at the time, right out of college. I'm like, dude, I don't know anything about boats. He's like, yeah, but you could talk to people. You're a nice kid. He's like, come, I think you could do well. So I showed up to a boat show and on my second day, I sold a boat for 1.4 million bucks and made more money that day than I did in the entire year as a golf pro. And I never left. This was 2003. Wow. And I've been hustling in that business, in the same business ever since. And then in 2017, I bought the family out and currently own it. Do you remember what you sold? Oh, what the boat was? Yeah, absolutely. It was a 2004 59 Marquis to a guy named Milan. 59 Marquis. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. awesome. It was the coolest man. story ever. Wow. Uh, so it all happened super fast. It was not planned. I don't think most good things usually are. Just yeah. kind of fell into it and loved it right away. I mean, we're basically delivering dreams for people, right? Yeah. Like we're not out trying to take people's money for anything except for to make their camera roll bigger and make their memories better. And that's yeah. that's a big deal for us. What was growing up for you like? So you grew up in a small town. What, what were the parents like? What was childhood like? Oh man, I have the best parents. So yeah. both my parents are teachers. And wow. the only bad part about me growing up is my dad taught at my high school. So he knew where every party was before I did. Wow. Um, but I played sports. I was a sports kid. My dad coached. I played basketball and golf. And just kind of did my thing. And then I went to college on a golf scholarship. Yeah. Uh, and I got a really sophisticated degree in recreational administration, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which I use none of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I ran like a couple little small businesses in college. Uh, and just kind of loved being an entrepreneur. I love the hustle. Who were you closest to growing up, mom or dad? Ooh, that's a tough one because we were a really close family. Okay. Like, my dad was def definitely like the disciplinarian, like yes. cracked a whip, and my mom was like, okay, yeah. if you need someone to lean on, like she's the guy. Pause one sec. <laughs> Hey, we're gonna leave this in here. So we have our bachelorette party. <laughs> this is exactly yes. my point. That's what I'm not gonna be. This, that's the business they're not creating. So that won't be allowed. Uh, that's funny. There's an actual slide on there. Yeah. Never mind. No. <laughs> I'm actually renting that boat. <laughs> you guys want to slide like, on the port, in bro? The, in the, uh, no, they're <laughs> going on the big lake. I don't know how they, one of these things haven't tipped over. It's out of control. <laughs> Dude, the wake in that big lake is insane. It's gnarly. It's insane. Yeah. People hear Lake Michigan and they think some small little lake. This is That's an ocean. Thought, people. That's right. This is the real thing. This is it's, the real deal. A, I told Tristan that yeah. if you can boat and ride in Lake Michigan, you can ride anywhere. Absolutely. 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 I'm still kind of yeah. soft when it comes to we'll take the seasons out there. And I'm like, dude, Lake Michigan, I'm going to destroy this old man in jet skis. Brother's ripping it. I'm like, dude, my arms are killing me. This lake's <laughs> killing me. I think I'm going to die. It's yeah. the real deal. But now there's this thing out called a gyro, a sea keeper gyro. Like this yeah. boat has it. So oh, it's a high speed perfect. gyro that spins inside the boat and keeps it from rocking. Wow. Yeah. So you can go chill out there in, in rougher conditions and yeah. no one gets seasick. Okay. That ain't bad. Okay, so where were we? We were in uh, regard to who you were closest Parents. with, tight, tight knit family. Yeah. Are you only sibling? No, I have a younger sister. Okay, you have a younger sister. Okay, yep. so tight knit family. And was there any moments growing up? It's like, oh, I'm closer with mom, I'm closer with dad, or is it just, it was all No, I mean, it, it was great for us. Like, I honestly yeah. feel super lucky, knock on wood. Like, I really, really encourage Still all tight? Parents. And still for sure. They're retired now, so they spend okay. a lot more time out in Vegas than they do in Chicago. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, still tight for sure. Awesome, awesome. And so you start to graduate high school. Were you working in golf? 
And I started to graduate when I graduated high school. I got a scholarship to play golf, and all I did was play golf. Oh, wow. um, my grandfather on my mother's side owned a restaurant, so I did a little bartending side hustle on the weekends. But other than that, golf in school. How old were you when you sold this boat? Not this boat. When I sold my first one, I started in 2003. I was 23 years old. Okay, you're 23. Yeah, years old. I'm 43 now. So okay. 20 years straight. 20 years of dedication. Yeah. Let's go. How important is that? Is is staying loyal to kind of that? You'll hear a lot of like wealthy individuals say, "Man, you need to focus on one thing and not just kind of divide all of your attention, your energy, and your money into multiple things when you're starting out." I think that's such an amazing question. I think there's two ways to answer that. One, I 100% support the fact that you should be great at one thing before you start spreading yourself out to too many other things. Yeah. Because if you're not a lead at one thing, you can't get to the pinnacle. At least in my opinion, right? Yeah, yeah. And then the other thing that you mentioned was loyalty, right? We have kids now, and I love hiring young guys like Mitchell. Yeah. But we have kids now that are somewhere for two years or three years, and then they venture off because the yeah. grass is always greener somewhere else. Yeah. Those kids never make it usually either. If you yeah. find a company that you love and a profession that you like, and someone that will back you and help you grow, you need to stick it out and grow it as far as you can. At least in my opinion. Yeah, a thousand percent. Where'd you find Mitch? <laughs> this is a really unique story. This is a good one. Uh, this is a good one. And if this runs long, you can definitely cut me. He worked in the gas stock in no, Selka. No, that is not how I found him. This is yeah. a sad story. Okay. So in 2018, my second year of owning Springbrook, I had a 52 Prestige in stock. It was a, it was a $1.5 million boat that I owned in inventory. Yeah. I hired a guy to take it from Seneca to Chicago by water. So this captain's running it up, and he gets to the uh, mouth in Hammond over here at 1 a.m., and he's coming toward Chicago. Homeboy falls asleep at the wheel and he runs into Northerly Island at 20 knots. That was your boat? Yes. Oh my God. Shreds it, dude. What, you know the boat? The captain was delivering the Bro. boat. Bro, yes. this is, I'm the guy, I'm that guy. <laughs> so he, he, <laughs> this is crazy. He, he, okay. he shreds the boat on yes, Northerly he Island. He limps it into Burnham Harbor. Three in the morning, he gets off, doesn't call a soul. The next morning at 6.30, I get a text message from like a customer. It's like, so my soul's boat sunk in, in Burnham Harbor. I'm like, holy shit, that's mine. <laughs> so I hustle my ass over there. My, my $1.5 million boat is sunk in Burnham Harbor. Brand new boat, Brand delivering new boat. it to the customer. Brand new boat, I owned it. Okay. So. The, the, yeah. the short version of the story, I call Towboat US to come over and get the boat out of the bottom. Who's on the towboat? This kid. Yeah. Oh. So I'm okay. sitting there, like, literally, I thought my life was ending, right? So I just start, like, hammering beers watching them get this up. I'm like, I might as well just get drunk. <laughs> like, what else am I going to do yeah. at this point? So Mitchell, like, hangs out with me for a while. He takes my card. Two years later, he calls me out of the blue. He goes, dude, I remember you, and I want to intern for you. So I made him come to Seneca, Illinois. He lived in an RV for the summer, and we abused him for a summer, and now he's here forever. <laughs> And he's a great kid. That's a dude, great story. Future. That's so, incredible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna be such a dog. You're already it, a dog. It is. Yeah. It was. Yeah. The intern was, was cool, bro. The yeah. intern was great. How did he get it to the dock? Because he was tied up. He was sinking. As it was sinking, he was like motoring it to the dock. And then the weird part is, is his dad was in another boat on his side, so his dad was watching this happen. Jeez. The kid's lucky he didn't yeah. die. Yeah, like, for sure. Um, but they towed him with the burn, and then they Do ran away. for that? I feel like Dave always makes me like should have for sure. But there, why would you leave? Like think about this. Yeah. Why would you leave? Mm -hmm. Because you have something in your system. Dude, so you you, yeah. bow, you run away. Absolutely. Dave's always like, if you mess around the jet ski, you could go to jail. And I'm like, bro, it's a yeah. jet ski. <laughs> no, do you know if they get you for no wake, it's a misdemeanor? For sure. Yes. I found that out the hard way. But the thing about the cat, here's the other thing too. Yeah. They're off the jet ski. The thing with captains, like if you hire someone to drive your boat and they're, they're a captain, they don't have insurance. They have none. It goes on my insurance. Mm. It's my baby. They don't have personal insurance. How much does a boat wreck me. hike up the boat insurance? Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> you might even get dropped. Yeah. It was, on something it was like that. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot. Wow. And then the kid, like, one, he didn't get in trouble. He kept his captain's license. And a year and a half later, he ran another one. Into under the, the ground? Onto the rocks. 68 azimuth. Right. I also That's salvaged crazy. that one. And Mitchell also it. salvaged that one. Was that yeah. the red one? The red yeah, ball? Dude, I wow. He's grounded that one. podcast with the captain. Of oh, the oh, my <laughs> that would God. Be crazy. I think that would be a bad job. There's a lot of people that would like that to talk That boat was in Chicago. You always see that thing. Yes. The Red Baron. Yeah. I hope he's moved to another place. No. He's still doing it. People hire him. People still hire him in Chicago. It's never ended. It's never ended. <laughs> Listen, guys, you could do anything in this world. <laughs> you, could, you could crash it and still stay employed. <laughs> Listen, you could do literally whatever you want. Mitch, tell us a little bit about you, though. How old are you? Where are you from? Yeah, so I'm 22 years old. I'm from uh, Bridgman, Michigan, which is just one town north of New Buffalo. Okay. Uh, same kind of situation that Kyle's from. Really small town. We did have a McDonald's, though, so <laughs> one step up. Yes. But, yeah, my graduating uh, class was 42 kids. Wow. And then uh, halfway through high school, my parents actually she took me out and put me into military school where I lived there wow. and shaved and everything yeah. for about seven months. Uh, graduated high school.
school early. And then from there, it was right into COVID. Yeah. So even prior to going to this military academy, when I was about 13 is when I started working for that Tobo US company. Yeah. It was my friend's dad's company and he owned all of Lake Michigan. So yeah. that kept me busy jogging around, doing different boat, boating activities and whatnot. Finished up with high school, COVID, COVID came. I went to college that fall, so that was 2021 or yeah, 2021, I went to Western Michigan University for my first uh, fall semester. And that was that same uh, that same year, 2021 into 22 school year is where I interned with Kyle. Um, and yeah, no, it's I've always been a part of uh, just the boating industry, whether it's on the lake. Uh, yeah. I did, when I was with Tobo US, it was more like the blue collar boating. Yes. Like it was more like I got really dirty. I was doing a lot of oil changes. It did give me a good really background on boating and boating knowledge. And yes. not only just like the luxuriousness, but actually how they work. Yeah. So you know, that's nice in a sense, but now I've more so transferred into kind of like the sales and the, the uh, sales assisting kind of operation here at Springbrook. That's so. What about so growing up for you, parent relations? How was that? Parent relations, well, my dad was in the military for 22 years. So okay. growing up with him, he was definitely the hammer of the yeah. family. <laughs> he, uh, you know, Kyle's met him for sure. And it's, he was definitely very strict. So I felt like I would kind of bounce back and forth between times as well as um, Toba US kept me traveling a lot. When I was 18, I moved up to Mackinac and I lived up there for six months uh, during during an operation uh, with Enbridge. Uh, and then when I got home from that, I moved to uh, Kentucky, Lake, uh, Lake Cumberland, and I lived down there for three months. So I was always kind of jogging back and forth, but uh, you know, my parents were really good at different things. My mom was definitely more of a nurturer. My mom was yeah. definitely more of like a caretaker. Like a traditional household. Now. Yeah, my dad was, you know, kind of the work harder yeah. you know, type of guy. He he also came from a very very poor poor family, yeah. uh, kind of bouncing back and forth to hotel rooms and whatnot. And yeah. So he expects a lot out of me, which I at the time it was very uh, kind of hard to live up to his expectations. But I'm really glad that he. Yeah, you kinda, always reflect on him. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm very That's grateful. A great pick up, Kyle. Nice job. Phenomenal. Yeah, 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 I'm very Kyle. I'm very grateful that he held me yeah. to a really high standard like Absolutely. that. I've, and, I've, and I've always kind of had that entrepreneurial buzz from him. I mean, when I was in seventh grade, my dad would not give me more than like $50 allotment for my basketball shoes. So yeah. instead he gave me a leaf blower and yeah. he told me to go around to my neighbors and start uh, start making money with that. And I started doing that. I mean, I was even doing work for customers that I acquired last summer that I acquired, you know, five, six, seven years ago, wow. just because they're my neighbors and they're like, oh, they need handyman's things as well as yeah. all my neighbors over in Michigan are from Chicago. Yeah. So they would come over there and not really know what's going on and then this little kid would show up and you know, help them with whatever they needed. Yeah. That's now, have you made a boat sale? So no, we haven't. I have not really closed a sale as I'm not directly in a sales position. Okay. Here. As I assist the sales team, I do attend the boat shows okay. and stuff and as just kind of a body that's there. the next step though? Is that like the vision sure. of like that's the direction you're headed in? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Absolutely. Okay, awesome. And then so let's go back over. So Kyle, <laughs> You guys, there, it seems like there's two things going on here. So you've got the the dealership, yep. right? But then there's also this separate entity now that we're we're developing with. Is it is it literally called Charter. Pardo Yachts? No, it's called MBN Charters. Okay, so, so the Pardo totally that we're on right now, the boat, just the boat name is MBN, and MBN okay. stands for Must Be Nice. Yes. Because all the time when I was a kid, I would see somebody with a nice car, or my dad would see somebody with something fancy and be like, Must Be Nice. Must be nice. Yeah. And I like that theory behind it because yeah. you know you see something and you think it must be nice, but what it took to acquire the hat so good, and the hustle it took to get there to be able to do that yeah. is what people don't appreciate. Yeah. So we like to tell the story. All that pain and sacrifice hidden beneath all that the big, work, beautiful man. boat. Nothing just shows up. Absolutely. So why charter? What made you decide to go in that direction? <laughs> so we do every single arm in the boating business, like literally down to washing people's boats weekly. And the one thing we didn't do was charter. And I've always stayed away from it because we see the charter companies in Chicago and they run really, really good businesses, but it's labor intense, it's mm. high risk, it's a lot of kids getting on boats, trashing boats, total disrespect. What is not in Chicago that you see in every other major metro metropolitan city, at least around the water, is high-end luxury charter, right? Like we want people to be able to come here and maybe it's just two people, maybe it's a couple, maybe it's somebody that just wants to be alone, maybe it's yeah. somebody that's staying at the St. Regis and doesn't want to be out in public and go on the lake. That's the beauty of boating is being by yourself. Yeah. And there wasn't a high-end company that was doing it, we saw a need for it, we're gonna try to fill that gap. And you have boats dedicated just to 
charter or I have this use... boat dedicated just for charter I see uh, we have plenty of other boats that yeah. if yeah. as we continue to scale and grow this that we can definitely throw within the fleet but we're market testing this year yes. right like again we're dipping a toe in to see like what the need is yeah. we've done minimal to no advertising and our phones have been blowing up like, I can imagine like, we yeah. have not even tried yet yeah. so once we really start to get after it um, I think it can definitely be a big thing yeah. but we also like we said earlier we don't want to lose our core focus which is yes. being the best boat dealer in the Great Lakes like yes. that's our core focus so we're, we're still hyper focused on that yeah. we're just at the point now where we have the right people in the right positions to kind of branch off of that and that's what this is and that's what Mitchell's doing on MBM yes absolutely so I love the I love what's going on here is there's no compromise in quality and so if that's something that you're into is like extreme quality and you're really not worried about investing in the quality high quality this this is one it's not like when you look at boats and everything like this is a 1.4 million dollar boat so in the grand scheme of things when you get onto this boat and you spend a couple hours it's a fraction an absolute fraction of the maintenance because Dave's kind of enlightened me on, on maintenance typically you're at like 10 percent or something of the of the boat on an annual cost yeah, like it's right. a 1.4 million dollar boat you're probably paying 140,000 to maintain the boat yep. on an annual basis so you do the math and all dude this is a steal this is high quality i love it we're bringing some of our top sales reps out in what a week two weeks yeah two weeks yeah, it's it's two weeks, weeks. We got you a great yes. experience june yeah, 2nd dude. it'll be awesome we're gonna have a phenomenal experience the charcuterie board they've got look look back here they got like a beautiful little setup back here you come out at the ev you got the city in the back it's phenomenal you know what i mean so you can set it up tables food you really can have an exquisite experience so i'm really excited dude i think man, i wish we could like can people buy in <laughs> <laughs> we, can we buy? We're always trying to buy. There you go. Right. There you go. We, we need to cut of this. So, um, what's the, here? I'm curious about boats. What's the what's the dopest boat you guys have in inventory right now? Oh man, Mitchell, you want to field that one? Man, go yeah. Uh, you know, we actually just got it into Burnham Harbor today. It was it's a 58 Serena. So they're manufactured in Turkey. Wow. And uh, later this year, we'll actually be taking on the first 48 Serena. So up until a couple months ago, the biggest boat that or the smallest boat that they manufactured was the 58. Okay. But then tailoring to kind of our life style and Kyle was a big influence on this was uh, kind of helping them model a boat that's a little bit smaller but it's upholding the same quality so they cut 10 foot off uh, you still have great livable space and everything but it's a lot more accommodating to uh, Great Lakes boaters as yeah. yeah absolutely you can go by an 80 footer but if you take it over to Michigan you're gonna have a really hard time finding places to dock right. it yeah. fuel it up you know it, it, able to be able to move that boat around whereas the 48 any any marina can take a 48 footer yeah so so to answer your question the cool boat that we got in inventory is probably the 58 Serena right now. What do you love about the Serena? Well, I mean, it's it's a tank. Yeah. I mean, you, you would see this boat and it doesn't look like a standard boat. It has a semi-displacement hull, so kind of similar to the hull on this one. It does come to a point that's a straight okay. line instead of kind of arcing in. Yeah. And it's a long-range cruising vessel and they're they're just made extremely well, extremely high quality. There's no cracks, no Is it no look really creaks. modern like this? You know, it is modern, but it holds kind of that same uh, elegant of uh, just luxury. So yeah. it is modern in a sense, but it, yeah. they definitely stay true to what they were coming from. Those Turkish yards, they build those. Yeah, it's a mega man, yeah. yeah, just beasts. What's so. the process of acquiring one of these? So, so that's a great that's a great question too. So we do two basic different types of sales, right? Like okay. we're slightly rare in our industry because we carry a significant amount of inventory. Like we want people to come, touch it, feel it, see it, yeah. and make a decision. So we have boats yeah. that they can instantly write a check for and drive away with tomorrow. Yeah. But the other arm of it is what we just built inside of our office here, which is our yacht design studio. Yeah. Where you can come in, you can come to this space, you can go for a ride to experience experience a boat and then you go sit down there with one of our consultants and you literally build the thing from scratch That's you pick the fabrics the leathers the wood colors the layouts the options you really 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 make it your own and that's what the studio does for us so we have both pieces of the puzzle now for people watching this they're like man i don't know like and they're 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 an established entrepreneur so if you're watching this listen i'm not trying to burst your bubble or anything like that but you, you've got to be doing a certain amount of revenue to, to you know sit down and acquire a, a boat like that but for those that are like over complicating it i know that boats have decent financing i think you can get in with 20 percent down yep. and then you can finance like a house just like a mortgage it's, right. a, it's a deduction just interest is a deduction because okay. you consider it a mortgage okay. that's, a, that's a really good point because i feel like a lot of people like on this boat that say we have a list for 1.4 million people yeah. hear that and then it's just right. imagining that they just have to write a check for that and push yes. it out immediately when that's not the case yeah. at all not at all so now what about the the when you design i like i've had buddies design cars they gotta yeah. wait for a year for it to come from italy or wherever it's getting designed so when you when they design that boat what's that process like timeline wise so a lot of it depends on the model i'll give you a perfect example of something okay. and when you ask the coolest boat this is the first one that popped in my mind a, a local young 
prominent entrepreneur who's never owned a boat, ordered a boat from us last year. It's a 52 Pardo GT. So it's like this. That sounds so sick. But, but bigger. Oh, very cool. And it's painted jet black. That's it so is so going to be the talk of Chicago. We're delivering yeah, it, it next weekend. Bro, so well, the we process for that. Podcast. <laughs> you would know so who that he is, is for here. sure. It is at boat. my yard okay. and we're delivering it to Burnham next wow. week. So the boat is incredible. But his process, because he wanted a custom, he's 35 years old, his first boat, he wanted exactly the way that he wanted it. Yeah. So he walked by, we sat down, we took him out for the day. He came back the next day and he spec the entire boat out. So that was so in August boat. of last year. Yeah. And he's taking delivery this year. That's, that's sweet. Quick. Oh, that's so quick. it's that's not forever, car, right? Yeah. Yes, it's not forever. Yeah. Six to eight months, like yeah. right Sometimes there. it's quicker than that because, that's you know, in order for us fast. to even receive our inventory boats, we do have, you know, kind of time slots or selected hauls that yeah. we have in the process that's of being manufactured. Right. So say I someone comes along yep. and is yeah. interested in purchasing a boat, depending on where it's at in the manufacturing process, if we can still make those adjustments, they could even be even quicker than that. That's insane. They come from Italy. Pardo comes from Italy. Serena comes from Turkey. So this boat was built in Italy. We actually, so one of our big trips that I take my team on is we go to Can Boat Show in the south of France every September. So we came over to Can Boat Show, hung out with us a little bit, got a few design ideas there, and then we just executed over the winter. They shipped it from uh, Italy into Palm Beach. Shows up at Palm Beach, it goes on a giant semi-truck, wow. and then they run it up to me. We put it together. It's wow. awesome, man. Love that process. It's a hell of a journey. Uh -huh. It's yeah. a hell of a journey. A lot That's of the, awesome. so like the boats like the 52 GT, as you guys know, like typical semi-trailers, 52 foot. So a lot of our boats um, cannot come by trailer. A lot of them, they actually have to get delivered to the Port of Cleveland, mm -hmm. and then me, uh, myself, or uh, you know another captain will fly over to Cleveland and actually drive it back through the Great Lakes underneath the Mackinac Bridge and deliver it here to How Chicago. How many days are you on the water there? That takes about four days comfortably. What about throughout the year? How many days are you on water? Uh, probably about every day. <laughs> every day that it's nice. Yeah. Every day that it's nice. Yeah, I mean, last month. What uh, do you do in the winter? In the winter? Well, up until this winter, I've been in college. Okay. So I'm, I'm still finishing my college degree, but that's online. Okay. As, you know, I, I'm kind of taking So you complete, on. you'll complete college, you'll get a bachelor in what? So it was in business, uh, business and sales, yeah. but that would have required me to go back to attending in-person classes for the next yeah. two semesters. So I actually changed it to general business. Yeah. That way it would allow me to do it remotely. Isn't it, and if, if, if I don't want to you know, put any of your professors on blast, but I, don't, I bet all the business learning you got from school doesn't compare to all the business you got. <laughs> oh no, it's actually Kyle extremely here. frustrating. And actually after my first internship, Kyle told me to stop going to college. And, <laughs> and I, I don't know that should be public. <laughs> 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 no, it's good advice, it's good advice. Yeah. And I would have taken that up completely, but and I'll be frankly honest here, my parents did have a college fund set up for me. And yes. I feel like I owe it to them to yes. finish it because they have already invested so much money yes. into it. So I would more rather just finish it for them and make them happy because they've already a spent kid. a ton of money. Yeah. College, college has validity. There's no doubt about it. People Absolutely. grow up there. Yes. Doctors, the, yeah. all these accountants, they, they need that, right? Yes. For an entrepreneurial type of kid, you can only learn so much. You can only learn so and, much. And for the value of what they gouge people for, oh I don't know that it's even close. That's another business I want to invest into. Yes. I would love to find out where all the funds go. Yes. The trillion yeah. dollars. And I'd, just let me in. You know what I mean? Give me a percentage. Me I'd, the hustle. I'd love to get into that. Dude, I'll teach a class. <laughs> like, for, like, cool. Seriously, dude. Especially on, like, on the path that you're on, I bet by 24 years old, you're making half a million plus year if you're not already. No, and that. it was extremely, it was extremely frustrating. Even like ever since I started yeah. at Springbrook and being with Kyle as he, as he's not only a boss but as a mentor. Yeah. It's, and and having your eyes open to this level of money it's insane. And, and and this kind of lifestyle. It's yeah. going back to college was extremely frustrating yeah. sitting Dude, in those classes. When you when you see when you when you sit down and and Kyle introduces you to a network if he brings in a young man that's thirty five years old and he purchases how much was the uh, was it a forty eight two point two two point two so hypothetically from my studies the median average American income is about fifty thousand let's say the professor is making fifty thousand that's almost thirty years of their income purchased by a thirty five year old in one. Not only that, stroke of a chap. Not only that, but he started his business with the gentleman who purchased this boat seven years ago. Right. Dude. It was, he, he, and he was in debt before that. Yes. It was an insanely inspiring old. story. Yeah, man. It's one of the best. Yeah. yeah, one of the best entrepreneurial stories I've ever heard. It's oh. incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. Well, we're trying to fish for the name. They're not giving it up, but we'll get it. So, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the boating community that What's I love the name them. Of the boat? We can <laughs> go from there. <laughs> no. Enjoy the ride. Enjoy, Enjoy the ride. Enjoy the I ride. love the we'll boating figure community out what because we had we had Dave on. And um, right, right with the cleaning service, Dave Reddick. Yes, yeah. With the elite, yeah. And dude, yeah. in Miami, the exposure and like some hundred foot boats, it's incredible. But I love the boating community because the guys that are in the boating community entrepreneurially, 
they're so professional. It's the best customer service. It's, it, I mean, they're loyal to a fault. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like they would die for their customers. And that's what, like, I don't care if you sell boats or if you sell freaking trash cans. If you bring that level of customer service, you're gonna be successful. Absolutely. It might not be overnight. I always tell people, don't worry about the product. If you bring an, an extreme amount of customer service and loyalty, and you don't compromise character, you're, you're gonna build something special. Because it's always the person before it's the product. So, you're 100% correct. I believe and in this, that. especially in this industry, right? Because people don't come to buy a boat for any financial reason. It makes no sense to spend money on a boat. <laughs> so, like, what has to be premium is number one, your experience, yeah. and number two, your quality of your time. Right? Yeah. The time that these people spend answering emails and phone calls is endless. If we can give them a weekend day a month yeah. where they can go out and decompress, and we ensure that that experience is exceptional. It's a win-win. It's, it's a win-win. It's a win. Yeah. It's a win. That's right. As we wrap up, I want to know the vision for both you separately and then ultimately for the business as well. So we'll start with Kyle and go to Mitch and then become united. We're like, we're disrupting our industry, right? Like we're yeah. doing it very different than a lot of companies are and we're very much grow or die mode. Yeah. Um, now with that said, we love our niche of Chicago. Chicago will always be home for us. We love the city. We love the people. We love boating on Lake Michigan. There's yeah. nothing like it, at least in my opinion out there. But we're quickly growing. So we're moving into another store in West Michigan called Adelaide Point, which is in Muskegon. We're going to be the boat dealer and servicing dealer there. Okay. And then we're going to move again and do one more location in the Detroit-Cleveland area. So we can cover the Great Lakes in full. We have no desire to play with Florida. We have no desire to play with the coast. Yeah. Like, sadly in Florida, which obviously is a great boating, in Florida, everybody with a cell phone is a boat dealer out there, right? Like, yeah. Everybody. Up yeah. here, we have our niche. We like our niche. And we're yes. going to continue to play in the Great Lakes market. I've been, we've been, I've been here almost four years now. You've yeah. been here 23 yeah. years. Yeah. And th this is my, in four years, my first experience of one, just, uh, just anybody reaching out with any type of like boating in general. Yep. Uh, and the quality here is impeccable. The only other place I saw decent boats, but there was no, it was just they were owned by individuals was, uh, where was it? New Buffalo. Yeah. New Buffalo, Michigan. And I saw maybe a handful of cool boats. Everything else was just kind of mid, nice boat. People just retiring and enjoying their lives. But uh, this is impeccable. So, Mitch. What's your vision? Well, so as this is kind of my launching pad, I mean, I essentially moved over here about two weeks ago. Yeah. So as of right now, just absolutely uh, doing everything I can to ensure that this MBN chart is, is phenomenal for my customers as it can and growing this brand. I mean, yeah. like as we mentioned, no one's doing it like this mm -hmm. and I'm very lucky to be on the forefront of it. Yeah. As, as you know, it's kind of my turn to take the ball from here and to take this to the next level. So, absolutely. you know, I don't really have a long-term vision. I mean, definitely the Ferraris and everything are cool, but yeah. in terms of being in Chicago, I absolutely want to capitalize on this and work towards my sale portfolio at Springbrook Marine Group. Awesome. Anything else you want to add, Dave? I just want to know from you guys, do you love boating or do you love the boating business? I love what boating provides the people, right? Like some of my best memories are on the water with my family. Okay. And I think being on the water separates yeah. a lot of things for people and it provides a lot of happiness for people. So I love boating. Obviously the boating business side of it has been great to me and I'm yeah. super appreciative of all that, but I really believe in what we're delivering, right? Because right. there's a million people out there that want to sell you something and there's a million people that need you to make a decision, especially when you're an entrepreneur or a high net worth guy. There's very few people that can provide happiness and memories for your family and I feel like we do that. I, I grew up in just on the boating, right? We bought, we bought my first boat when I was like seven years old. It was a 21 foot crown line and that exposed me to being on the water and I do love it. It's an escape from land. It's it's kind of the same thing with a pilot. A pilot analogy is, you know, you're, you take off and you have to think about what you're doing out there and you're distracted from the problems on land. Yeah. And I like that aspect of it. And then just the last couple of years, I've really been exposed to the business side of it. And, you know, as I mentioned, when I was in seventh grade, starting that like lawn care leaf blowing business, I, I love the business side of it as well. So just being able to come Find those two is, is is it makes me very happy. I enjoy it a lot. So where can they find you guys? So Springbrook Marine Group, uh, springbrookmarine.com. You can find us right there very easily online. Uh, home for us is at 465 North McClure, which is right downtown Chicago in River East and Streeterville. And then our main marina, the mothership, our location in, uh, where we have all of our storage, dock services in Seneca, Illinois, which is just a little west of Joliet. Wow. Awesome. Guys, this will be really easy to find in downtown Chicago because just look for the best looking boat in the water. <laughs> I, was like, I was getting out the Uber like, man, dude, I'm going to have to look around. I was like, oh. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Real easy. So it, it'll be easy. This was an incredible podcast. I know I always say this, but this this is truly a top tier podcast. We just recorded. These guys are incredible. They're genuine. On and off camera, they've been the same guys uh, and just incredible customer service. So I hope you guys have a blessed day. We're going to head to Miami. Have a great day. Peace. Peace.